of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, Mayor Minnie. Here. Brenneman? Here. Kill? Here. Monahan? Here. O'Hara? Here. Randall? Here. And Jones? Here. All right. Do we have any additions or motions for approving the agenda? All right, make a motion to approve as printed. Second. Discussion? Mayor Mons, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstain? Okay, do we have a motion to approve the minutes from February 2nd, 2021? And I make a motion to approve minutes from 2 221. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstain? Abstain. All right, and next up, approved bills submitted for payment. Second. Second. Okay. Okay. Discussion? Eric, you both? Roll on Randall. Yes. Keel? Yes. O'Hara? Yes. Bonner? Yeah. Jones? Yep. And Bernard? Yes. Okay. but I'm hoping that we can adjust it to the way that it was um, previous years where we're utilizing Main Avenue from Modish to South Bar and then also um, usually the city guys will put the barrier on First Street right on Main um, over by Open Hours and then towards our alley in the back. I'd like to keep it that. I think that I wrote it so that the barrier would be on Main but I would prefer to keep it to the alley that way. Um, in hindsight, some conversation, we would like to maybe utilize that space for more activities, maybe kids' activities, and um, had a conversation, potentially Junior Achievement might want to co-op one of our evenings and do their bean big tournament, maybe the same night. I don't know if that's gonna happen or not, but at least it gives us that option to use that space. So we're keeping it once a month this season, um, preferably, I really wanted to blow up as big as possible before I come asking for another night of the month. So, um, ideally, this season we can grow and utilize most of Maine. So we'll see where we can take it. But is there any other questions? Do we have to accommodate the barriers? The dugout's not right straight across from Modish, is it? Do we have to accommodate that? Well, in the past, we wanted to allow for uh, parking for the they senior go. citizens to yeah. go. So yeah. um, I did, I think the way I wrote it was utilizing, um, basically having um, the alcohol permitting the total of Main Street. That way, if somebody does go to the dugout and wants to come, yeah. they can have an alcoholic beverage because I don't really want to cut them off. Right. But. I also don't want to anger the senior citizens. <laughs> no. Do you, do you see any issues with? No. Yeah, okay. No. Nope. Everything went good last year. Yeah, thank good. you. Yeah. <clears throat> good. All right. Do we have any motions to approve? Motion to approve. Second. All right. Discussion. Kelly had a birthday this week, so it should be nice to her. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Thank you. 
Uh, I will clarify it. Yeah, just quit quoting. Oh. I was waiting to see if there was any other discussion. <laughs> that really wasn't a discussion, it was more of a comment. <laughs> no. Yeah. All right, well, Brennan? Yeah. Jones? Yes. Monahan? Yeah. O'Hara? Yeah. Keel? Yes. Yes. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I was just going to clarify that it was um, the first Thursday again of the month, except for the month of September. There's five, five Thursdays in September, and because October tends to be wishy-washy for us, I, we have September 2nd and then September 30th on the calendar, and still that 30th might may or may not happen depending on weather. So I just wanted to make that comment. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully, I'll get warm soon. All right. The next item we got is second reading ordinance 703, establishing the Park and Recreation Board. Good discussion on this last time. Um, some people here representing and talking about that. So, this will be the second reading. No changes. There's no changes. Um, I'm not sure how in depth you got into discussion last time around. Me and Tom talked a little bit about it today. Um, he wasn't here either, so we just wanted to make sure we understand the full extent of what this would do as far as codified law is. So yeah. I asked him to kind of bring up a couple things just so it's doing what you guys want it to do. Yeah, and I wasn't sure from the purpose that's stated in the ordinance if you're looking more of an advisory committee type role or if the idea is the council's pretty well going to delegate this board, you're going to run the parks and you'll get your budget to us and we'll dedicate the funds and then you're going to be in control of the parks and rec throughout. I mean, it's, they're, it's still under the direction of the council, but if you do have a parks board, um, they operate kind of like a library board in a lot of communities where you give them a budget amount and they run with it. So um, <laughs> I wasn't sure what your intentions were and wanted to make sure you know when you establish a board by ordinance, there is a delegation of control that passes over to that board as opposed to an advisory committee that would come back to the council um, for a number of things that they'd be um, making recommendations on. So. Um, the, the statute creating the, the um, Parks Board uh, says right in the Parks Board shall control and supervise the public parks of the municipality. So it, it is a delegation of authority that would um, come from the council, but by passing the ordinance you basically pass the torch over to this board that you create. Um, obviously you control the appointments to the board and the, those things, but um, there is a delegation of authority that goes with that. And so I just wanted to make sure you <coughs> understood that that was um, different than an advisory committee that might come back to the council with recommendations. Um, they actually would come back to the council with a budget. Um, I think by uh, statute it's July of each year they come with a budget for the following year. Um, and then they control their budget. Okay. So um, if that was your intention is great. I just wanted to make sure that that was um, fully understood and Teresa and I weren't sure having not been at the last meeting that that was the direction. I know it's been on and off the table. Yeah, I, I just told him, you know, we had talked about this last year and whatnot and I guess I kind of got more of the feeling you wanted more in an advisory mm -hmm. position versus delegating them a budget or whatnot because we never ever talked about that before but I wasn't part of the discussion last meeting either so I said we just want to bring that to your attention and make sure you have what that it's going the right direction that you guys want it to before we final finalize anything. So then, oh, what if it uh, what if it's a board that mm. is not given a budget? Well, <laughs> you still. I mean, it's still. I mean, by statute, they still are delegated the authority to. Control and supervise the public parks. And that's the idea of creating a park, and in this instance, a park and rec board. Um, so, it, I mean, it really is a, the idea of kind of washing your hands other than, other than the, some large oversight over things. But day to day operations, they can include uh, employees that are become, you know, if you have a parks and rec director, that would be part of the 
uh, budget that they would present, um, all of those sort of things. So I, I'd, right. I think you do the board concept that you just would um, anticipate that that's what you would do is, because um, they're required by statute to come and make a budgetary request each year. Um, I guess if you don't fund them, there's not much for them to do in terms of supervising the parks. But, but the same token, if they come with their budget and say we want to spend $50,000 on bleachers next year, and we approve that, then they have to spend that money just on bleachers, like Craig. If he budgets for a loader, right. he has to use them funds for that loader. Yes, they'd be required under those same sort of requirements. Right? Yes, but it's going to be up to them to decide. Well, I assume they're going to, I mean, if they come to the budget, they're probably going to have some just operational funds for whatever that they may um, envision needed. Where are we budgeting at? That right now, correct? Do you budget parks or just? Yeah, we sit, I sit down with Teresa and we go over what items we think are going to need the parks and that stuff, and then we just add it into the budget. So it's usually like one of the line items that will, over the explanation, will say like this much for bleachers, this much right. for a pair of bleachers, and good things like that. There's 113 sections on the, uh, in the chapter that talks about parks and rec boards, so it's, a, it's pretty comprehensive when. Sit down and go through all of those. So, um, if it's an advisory committee that is more what you're looking for, I would be hesitant to recommend to you to adopt an ordinance creating a, a board. There's, there's legal significance with that. So, and I assume the nonprofit sports and rec committee would be dealing with the board as far as soccer fields softball fields, it wouldn't be dealing with the city council, they'd be dealing with the board. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, in my little scope and in the thought process of that, I was envisioning more of an advisory, an advisory group. Basically, that, that idea is um, go through and, and prioritize them, basically, based on what should happen or what could happen, and then make recommendations to the council off of that. And I, that's, I think that's a very easy thing to do. I just think it's probably better in the scope of setting up a committee. And, and that's, that's certainly within the council's prerogative to do that. And they serve the pleasure of the council. But um, you know, they aren't given the legal authority to do some of the things that a park board can do. Right, right, right. We did talk about that option of setting it up by ordinance or by a committee. Right, right. And you can basically set it up configure it the same way, you know, same scope, but committee yeah. would be more of an advisory versus kind of some of the state yeah. statutes you brought up as far as what a board governs. I look, and I think Teresa must put this together, where Brandon does that as a committee, and there are some other communities that do it as ordinance. Mm -hmm. um, typically, I think the ones that do by ordinance probably have full-time park and rec directors. Um, that has been a response to the park board. You see it in the, the larger communities, so it sees nothing different than Hartford, I don't think. Well, I'm going to recommend that we either do not approve second reading or we at least table second reading until we, until we look at the committee thing. I don't feel like that quite has the, the scope I was looking for with that. And you had provided us information on the committee, so we can Yeah, the that first time we brought up this was in the packet a couple yep. meetings ago. Yep. So, mm -hmm. And like I said, it's basically structured the same way as far as the number of members, how many times they meet, but a committee would be, I think, more this advisory if that's what we're looking right. for versus mm -hmm. what the ordinance would do. So what's our best bet here just to, to vote and deny or to vote this down or just table it, it won't it won't go away if we table it. The thing is if you table it if for some reason we decide to come back to this model, all we gotta do is have our second reading. True. We have to go through the first reading again. True. If for some reason in the next however long. And then we can say Teresa have Teresa put on put the committee information on the next agenda, agenda. And mm -hmm. in the packet for the March second meeting. It does answer the question a bit about funding, allocation of funds to 
HASR, uh, uh, and allocation of funds to you know, bike, bike and rack trail. And some of those groups have some funds left. And now, if you put that money into this board, in theory, you have already come, you can have a budget. So it does weigh, it, yeah, it's worth, it's, I guess it's worth mulling over a little further. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we should look at the other one, though, too, don't you think? Before we make our well, <coughs> seems like our primary decision was so we wanted to pay them for their meetings. If it was a committee, we'd have to pay them. <laughs> <laughs> <It's all. laughs> I'm not opposed to a board, <laughs> but I don't think we got the actual what the ordinance would require of us or of the board. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, it's going to be it's much yeah. more comprehensive than yeah, yeah. Yeah. coming back to recommendations to the, to the council. You could change your ordinance, I suppose, on committees and put it there without compensation. <laughs> if that's the, I mean, if that was the, one of the driving forces. So just out of curiosity, if we start a quote unquote board that has really bound by state law, how do you, how do you end a board? Can you end a board by ordinance too? It, you'd end it by repeal of the ordinance. I'm not sold on why not to, Tom. You have a fear and I'm not getting it. I, I, it's just they're going to have way more control and I, that's fine if that's what the council wants. I just want to make sure, you know, that you don't expect them to come back to you with all of the administrative type decisions and, uh, you know, if they're responsible to Craig um, and he's got bosses there, he's got bosses here, um, who ultimately is he responsive to. There's some issues like that. Um, but it, I mean, it is, it is an independent board of the council. You know, independent of the council, meaning other than once you give them the budgetary authority, they're going to have some level of control and they exercise, again, they control and supervise the parks. So. Um, you're passing that torch over to them to do that. And if that's what you want, that's great. I just wanted to make sure that that was fully understood. Yeah, I personally like that idea myself, but uh, yeah, I mean, but we yeah, also know we control the budget, though, still. Right, yeah, I feel like we got enough control. We still we we don't need to hear control the budget. We don't need you still everything. control the budget. Correct. Mm -hmm. I mean, Think outside the wheelhouse here a little bit. They came to us and said, "How much, Craig? How much money do you have budgeted for mowing, lawn care, all of that stuff in the parks?" And we gave them a number, and they said, "Well, we want you to transfer those funds to the park board, and we're going to subcontract all that work out this year." That's an example. That's something they could do. If I they can understand that correctly. The city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does the pool fall under parks? In our budget, there are two separate categories. We have the pool under one category and parks under but one, and streets is under another. Park and rec and pool would fall under that. <coughs> I think you could, however you sure. want to do it. You could, yeah, you could put the pool under it. I think so. <clears throat> are you thinking about employment issues at the pool, or are you thinking about? I don't know, I'm thinking about a lot. Motion to table, ordinance 703 to our next council meeting. Second. Just for discussion, it, it's well, easy. Well, actually, on the table, we don't get to discuss. Oh, no, that's right. My bad. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Motion to table for next council meeting. We'll vote. Come on. Sure. Jones? Yes. Ryan? Yes. No. Okay. O'Hara? Yes. Kill? Yes. And Randall? Yes. Yeah. All right. Next item, we have first reading word in 704, cable television. <clears throat> 
So do this. So basically our franchise agreement with Golden Whale. Um, we had a 10-year agreement. It is up this year. Um, so I had Tom review our current ordinance. He went through it. Um, basically just as just did a few minor changes in some of the verbiage. Um, I sent that to Rick Reed with Golden West. He agreed with them. And so what's in your packet is the updated version. I kind of, in my report, gave you a list of what those changes were, but mainly they were just to kind of clarify a few things and clean some stuff up. Um, in essence, it's, it's another 10-year agreement. Um, basically, you know, the way it reads, it's not exclusive, it always has been. So another cable company wanted to come in, they most certainly can. Um, so it's nothing like that. And then um, with that though, um, Golden West does pay into the city a, a franchise every year based off the number of their su subscribers. So we do get that revenue from them. So this would be renewing it for another 10 years. These are always 10 years. I was wondering why we haven't okay. done a long time. Mine is probably the only one for numbers. There, there is a, last time. <laughs> there is in the ring. There is a three-year just review of it, and if both parties are okay, it just keeps going. But it essentially is a ten-year time frame. Though. It feels like it's been twenty. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's probably your that too. <laughs> <laughs> I think you were. I think I was here for the last two of these. you <laughs> were. That sounds like a motion. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All right, discussion? Put that on my plaque, Teresa. <laughs> that, that I was here for three <laughs> cable franchise <laughs> City of Hartford. Um, so we're on pace. We're still doing about one call a day on average, so still pretty busy. Um, training for February. Our EMS training is psychological, neurological seizures, and cardiac arrest management. For the fire, we're going to do radio communications, and at our monthly business meetings, we started doing training. Uh, just a short training session, we are going to teach everybody CPR on a downed firefighter. So, that's what I have, unless somebody has a question. Alright, uh, thank you. Else? Yep, thank you. Thanks, man. Alright, move to City Engineer Porter. Pitch. Everyone. Uh, on the report, we had actually three action items mentioned, but we understand that a couple of the two agreements are being reviewed by the city attorney and will be applying the next agenda. Um, we do have uh, the item for discussing an agreement that we put together for a regional wastewater study. John's here tonight too to help discuss that. Um, so I thought we'd just uh, review the, the agreement that we put together and then ensure answer any questions you have. Um, but this is an agreement that uh, staff and the city council asked us to put together for a regional study, uh, looking beyond Hartford, looking at the Crooks, Hartford, Ellis, kind of Northwest, Sioux Falls area. Um, it's an agreement to basically do inventory and evaluate where we've listed some stakeholders in this agreement that we feel we're gonna coordinate with. Um, those towns I mentioned in a number of them and probably adding in Minnehaha County, uh, Lakita, Lakita, uh, the DNR as well. Um, you can see the figure at the end just shows the area that we're proposing to study. But in the grand scheme of things, this is just to help understand what it would take to serve that area with, with wastewater needs, meaning treatment needs and collection needs as well. Um, going out and seeking if there's any 
partners that want to involve themselves with with that as well um, between those entities. So um, I guess I've opened up to questions. At this point, Mitch, how, how I don't know why, did we not discuss um, Humboldt? Because this does not encompass. We did. But I think that's a fair question. Uh, Humboldt and Wall Lake, even. If you, circ if you swing that arc a little further south and west, you right. pick up Wall Lake. And right. That was the first thing I noticed today when I looked at the map. I thought, son of a gun, why didn't they? Why didn't we talk about or mention at least? There's 60 households or whatever around there, maybe more, maybe 100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think potential for 60 more. And I know their wastewater treatment is in. Uh... Terrible. Yep, that's in terrible shape. <laughs> Where's that at? <laughs> Wall Lake? Wall Lake or? Yeah. Wall Lake. Yeah. yeah. Well. <laughs> it's at the end of its life. They had us look. They want us to take it over for before, and okay. it's not something that we want to take on at that time. Yeah, we can sure we get, we get in, we get in loop, we include those Wall Lake and uh, you know two more service areas than what we were originally anticipating, but um, we could evaluate that as we go, and if there would be some extra charges later, maybe we could bring that to your attention before we got too far. Uh, but at this point, if you want to move forward with this, you know, we'd still, <clears throat> we could include the Fall Lake area and Humboldt area. It swings actually east of 29, I mean. Yeah, it wouldn't necessarily go there. Okay. Really, you could move it out. Okay. Yeah. It's, you know, when we get into this, what we do is establish the boundaries, the basic sure. boundaries, and that's right. really what will define your yeah. serviceable area. Right. Um, so the circle is simply just to give you a nicer area. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Right. Yeah. But that was the first thing I thought when I looked yeah. at that. That we should have maybe, we should have at least discussed that. And I don't know that we even mentioned it. We didn't talk about I know those yeah. two interviews. Well, so. Wall Lake actually ends up, you're right. I mean, I think when just natural drainage of Wall Lake actually surfaces east towards Sioux Falls and then dumps in its concrete. So just along the west side of okay. so when it when Wall Lake fills up with water, not the sewer, but when Wall Lake yep. so the natural drainage is to go straight east towards Sioux Falls and then north towards uh, Family Park. Like it's kind of creek that runs through there. So it's a little bit further south, but right. I mean I so that area, Wall Lake might be more of a candidate for well you, we could consider it from a gravity standpoint but maybe one that you push it instead of gravity huh. so that the course, that goes straight east like from that park right is, it, where, yeah, is it that actually, where the outlet is yeah if it outlets it it drains easterly towards sioux falls and then yep. you know kind of okay. meanders north okay it's towards concrete so I think at this point, I mean, it's kind of a, it's it's good for us to review this tonight, digest it a little bit, and ask questions, and and after Tom finishes reviewing contracts and things like that, we you know maybe make a decision on the next. But a couple of questions I would have would be, <clears throat> and maybe you put it in here, and I maybe missed it, but how long do you think it takes to get this complete? And then two, <coughs> what, what can we expect to see when it's finished? Is it, um, yeah. what, what kind of, what formats are going to be in? What kind of recommendations come out of that? What do you, mm -hmm. what can we expect to see if we were to go first? So from a, so from a, from a report standpoint, you'll get a report, a book that'll actually look at what we, it'll actually identify uh, in writing, you know, what, what our findings were, what our evaluations were, with the discussions of the stakeholders, and then it'll uh, it'll go through the uh, uh, kind of our evaluation process, why and how we did what we did from an evaluation standpoint, and it'll decide you know we'll make decisions such as you know what would be the best gravity routes, things like that, what areas will kind of an impact as far as when I say impact, I mean what kind of a <coughs> demand is that area going to have 
um, in here, we're going to reach out to those communities and ask them to give us that information. Like, let's just take for an example, a Crooks. You know, if they, here's what their town is today, here's what their demand is, but here's what their projected growth rate is. We'd take that growth rate then and plug that into our size of the, what we would need for treatment. And then uh, evaluate how is that going to get to the treatment facility and where is that treatment facility logically going to sit. Um, so it's um, so so I think I you asked several questions there within your question, which was, you know, how you what are you going to look at? You're going to actually have a, a basically a booklet, a report that identifies, as well as a schematic that will identify general areas and won't identify exact areas because we don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. We want to show general areas because as soon as you start identifying those areas in a report, it's going to become pretty, that land is going to become pretty valuable if you actually go down that road. And then uh, we're going to look at cost. What is this going to cost uh, a regional customer to connect to that? And so that will look at overall cost of the infrastructure to get it to be a working facility. And so I think that that's your biggest thing. And then you're, you know, that's that's to me the, I'll call it the easy part, because then you have to go through the process of getting people on board if they, you know, if you're gonna go down the road of a regional system, you know, and get commitment, set up a separate entity. You, you need to set that, you know, similar to what, you know, uh, Similar to what you were talking about in Park Board, but this would be a separate independent board, I would imagine, that would have its own treatment facility, and you'd just be a customer of that treatment facility. Um, and so, I mean, there's a lot of just, a, uh, I'll call it, a lot of things that will come after this. This study will just identify what, what that cost might be, where might that treatment facility and collection systems be located, so that you can actually take a take a closer look at that. Something to keep in mind is, you know, the, the city of Sioux Falls has a growth area that they they uh, have platting jurisdiction over, and so they're going to push back on this regional facility. They're going to push back on that uh, because they're going to want those customers ultimately to come to them. Um, there's going to be. Um, well, I think the outer communities would all participate, I would think. I don't know. I guess I'm anticipating that. But um, this this report's going to have pretty comprehensive on what you're what you would expect as far as where would that treatment facility go, how would you get it there, and estimated cost of what that's going to be. Um, there's a lot of environmental issues to deal with uh, once that decisions made and if you choose to jump on board with that, uh, there's a lot of environmental issues to, to deal with, meaning <clears throat> the county is going to have some say on what happens with that. The county is going to, you know, they're going to, the state DNR is going to have some issues with that. Um, they would like a regional system, quite honestly, the state probably would. Um, unless they get pushed back from the city of Sioux Falls, telling them to push back on this. So I think you're going to start seeing a lot of political games being played as soon as this uh, gets out there in the public. So. And being the city of Hartford is in that study area, does some of this overlap with basically um, feasibility, I'll just call it feasibility study you would have done had it been just a city of Hartford, but, I mean, as far as growth rates and things like that. Well, we we obviously have Hartford's growth rate, uh, you know, kind of already taken place. You know, we've already done it for Hartford. We've estimated what your growth rate's going to be. Now, obviously, that's going to be updated as we go farther along with your treatment plant if you decide to do that. But the um, so Hartford, you've already got a lot of your background information put together. That would be what we would ask for from the other communities. What is your potential growth rate? You know, what kind of population are you anticipating? Um, and then, you know, you would, you would uh, as far as doubling up on 
services though, um, I'd say you're probably not doubling up services other than you've you've done a lot of the study area for study for Hartford already and you've you've you know the only thing that you doubled up on is you bought land, I'd say. You're still gonna use that collection system uh, that you've got in there because you're gonna still try to service that whole area adjacent to that creek. So if that isn't wasted, what I would say not, not wasted is you bought some land that's still very valuable that you could resell if you didn't use it. So a lot of this you know, would be just um, very usable for the future. It's, it, it expands from what we've already got for, for you on your previous yeah. so are, are you asking if there's overlap between kind of the previous agreements that you've seen for the wastewater plant versus this study? Right. right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's really no, no. overlap there. This is kind of above and beyond what we have plans for the facilities plan. Okay. okay. The time timeline on this, and I mean, you, you will, before this is completed, if you want to get on the state water plan for next year, for like what we had talked about, for your own facility, let's just say that this didn't happen, or just say you get down the road, you, you reviewed it, and you chose not to jump on board with the regional system, and you want to go back to the where you're going with your first direction, um, this might take too long to get you an answer before you make a decision if you want to be on for 2020, 2022. Is there any other example of a regional wastewater group in South Dakota in a state? I don't know that answer. I don't. I don't know that answer. I think it'd be like uh, some of the sanitation districts out in the Black Hills. <coughs> yeah, all ones I could think of. Yeah, but it's, there's a sewer district that they have created in, in that area. Yeah, That's a yeah but ultimately we'll be. So I mean, with with. With what we're proposing as a current plan right now, I mean, we're going to have a sewer district too. That's going to bring in Hartford Heights, whatever. At, I mean, that's a sewer district. Mm -hmm. I'm curious if there's another example of a regional plant in the state of South Dakota. Well, well, Sioux Falls calls them their facility a regional system mm -hmm. because they can take outside customers. So Sioux Falls is, and, but they've got just a upcharge. Basically, they've got a different charge for an outside customer to dump into the city of Sioux Falls. But Sioux Falls is, I mean, literally so many square miles that it's a region in itself. Okay. Really, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. But they're taking Brandon, they're taking T. They were taking care of part, part of it. Yeah. Sioux yeah. Falls and, actually and, uh, owns and their facility. Sioux Falls right. owns a facility where something yeah. like this would be a district or a, right. yeah. a group of so towns that would own it. There's just definitely a difference with that. I mean, and uh, what Sioux Falls is called, they call it a Sioux Falls regional system. It's actually a Sioux Falls system that they have charges for outside customers, which is nice that they've got. You know, they offer that to communities outside of their area, so they those communities can have a choice whether they want to treat their own waste or pump to a regional system and just pay the upcharge. Yeah, I mean, I think the other option that, that may be considered as a more of a regional <coughs> entity rather than a municipality providing that service, a regional yeah. entity that has representation on that board from each municipality. Yeah, we don't know yeah, that the, anyone the, anything like that. that this, I don't know anything that does. Not in South Dakota. What I, I mean, what we would suggest the best way to make a regional system work would be just what Mitch said. Create its own entity, have its own board, and then each community would have a representation or whatever population each uh, community would have, they would have that representation of that amount of votes, so to speak, as, what, as they buy in. And so you become, It'd be its own board, just like you are your own board for Hartford. You would simply, as as you give up your, you know, you pay them, just like you'd pay a park board, you'd pay them so much a year to operate the <laughs> amount of gallons that are going to that system. And then they would be their own board and they'd make the decisions on uh, to expand their plant or expand their lift station or do, you know, rebuild any part of their infrastructure. 
So it would be, you know, if you do a true regional system, that's what you would do. But then you would just be part of that regional system. But you, you as a city. Like Lewis and Clark. It'd be like a Lewis right. and Clark yeah. for wastewater. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, you could, could you take this regional study, look at the data, and still say, no, we want to own it mm -hmm. and control it. It's ours, and we still would. We want to know what it would take to build the right plant. That if the city of Kirks wanted to sign on, or if growth in that entire area, right. and that, that it would still be able to sign on to ours. Would this study still give us the information to make that decision? We were, based on our conversations at the last meeting, we were anticipating this would be, a, you know, not necessarily. Facility would be located wouldn't be located here. It'd be located somewhere else. Now, if you if you were to consider maintaining and owning the treatment facility, that suggests you keep that within your city limits so you can control the zoning on that. Mm -hmm. You know, so stay where you're at. In other words, and have those customers come to you, have them pump to you, and then that would be different. To me, that would be very similar to what Sioux Falls has done. Right. Create your own treatment plant and have these other customers pump to you. And then you charge them some increased rate. They help cover the cost of treating their waste, but not only that, just help reduce the cost of your operation. That's what I think you're asking. And that's exactly what happened with Sioux Falls, where Sioux Falls did that exact thing. And they created what they call the Sioux Falls system. They call it a regional system, but it's really a Sioux Falls system that actually just charges more money for the outside customer because it is an outside customer. They have the they have the asset there being the treatment plant. But you would have a treatment plant and then have them come to you and just meet her. That cert that would be to me, if you redirected us to do that, that would probably be um, maybe a little more appealing to some of these communities. Um, in my opinion, the ones that are close by, especially Wall Lake, Humboldt, um, and maybe even Crooks, you know, might be more people. And then there were this other, I don't know what that other development might have been that's out in the county, but if they would consider it, you know, you could, you'd be, uh, you know, you'd be looking for more ways to treat. Right. It's all control. Really, I, that's what I've, as we've been discussing this over the last several meetings, that's the deal. The regional deal, basically, we are relinquishing control. You become a, you you a customer. You yeah. go from a provider to a customer. We get a seat at the table. That's it. But the, yeah. the problem with that is that Sioux Falls has a much bigger chair at the table. The county would have a much bigger chair at the table. The state of South Dakota would have a much bigger chair. <coughs> you know, between Sioux Falls, the county, and the state, any one of those three could either squash it or table you to eternity. On this deal, sure. Yeah, yeah. I'd have, you'd have to wait the. You'd have to wait it such that. Yeah. If you if you got if here if well, you're, if you got too reasonable on a cost for the sewer, which it wouldn't be cheaper than Sioux Falls. I can see Sioux Falls saying, "Yeah, take all, all. take all that." Mm -hmm. But I, Sioux Falls is wastewater treatment. The waste is cheap compared to anybody else's around them. You know, treating the waste for a smaller community has, a, you know, it just it costs more um, than what they've got a lot more customers to sort of some of those costs. So, well, I mean, to me, I would I would say if I'm hearing you guys correctly, and maybe you're thinking if you did move forward with any type of a regional, I'll call it. Hartford regional system, if that's what I'm hearing you say, that would be something that, you know, would be probably a little more appealing to these other communities than, than just setting a regional plant somewhere out in the county or in a small town, maybe it was Ellis, I don't know where that would that, be. That could be phase two. In my world, phase one is, yes, we have a Hartford plant that has agreements with these other communities mm -hmm. and then we can talk to our taxpayers and say hey we're going to spend an extra five or seven million dollars to do this yeah and then we're going to generate some revenue off of these contracts yeah that'd be my vision mm -hmm. 
That's what I envision. Yeah. My personal opinion is, yeah, it's it's all, it's all about Hartford first. Yep. And yeah. I, I wouldn't want to relinquish that that control of that. Right. To know right. That, that right. Right. I, yeah. And, and then we're able to manage Hartford first, and then if we want to be able to take on somebody else, that we've at least done the study to build the right plant. That if we want to take on the right, right. that's what I the think. right customer. I'm, I'm way more interested in that. Yeah, I am too. Right. And we can do that side by side with moving forward with the plan too. And we talked about you know possibly adding treatment capacity. Mm -hmm. um, so that'd be something that we, we want to. That's what we we're planning to evaluate with our uh, design going forward right now. So um, and like I said, that's, that's something we can do side by side. So one of the things, what Mitch is trying to get at is we were looking at on our original design <clears throat> up to 30%. The first proposal you saw was up to 30%. And then later you came back, you talked about uh, maybe expanding that to keep that moving faster uh, than what the 30% was. And to do that, we also looked at not just what our Hartford's needs today, but it was what our Hartford's need in 40 years or maybe somewhere out in the future so what would that other expansion be? So we can at least look at those costs through the 30% design, not full design in our business. Yeah, yeah. And our last proposal wasn't full design for 40 years. It was full design for, for, uh, 20, year for 20 year system, but it was up to 30% for a 40 year system. What would that take? Mm -hmm. And that 40 year system, then you would know at, I'd say, in, like July or August, you would know what is that cost going to be, and you could decide if you want to make that expansion or do that expansion with your budget request in October, which is when you got to have your decision into the state, you know, the state water plan. So that would make a They're not going to do it All right, do we have a motion to adjourn? So move. Okay. All in favor? Thanks. Aye. 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 Aye.